Today is Leitare Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent. We'll be here again in Tennessee, in Manchester. And this epistle for this fourth Sunday of Lent, Leitare Sunday, Rejoicing Sunday, as we're heading towards the second half of the season. The epistle is taken from the Paul's letter to Galatians, chapter 4. Brethren, it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, but he of the free woman was by a promise. Which things are said by an allegory. For these are the two testaments, the one from Mount Sinai engendering unto bondage, which is Agar. For Sinai is a mountain in Arabia, which hath affinity to that Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But that Jerusalem which is above is, is free, which is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice thou, barren, that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For many of the children of the red desolate, more than of her that hath a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born according to the flesh persecuted him that was after the Spirit, so also it is now. But what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free. By the freedom with Christ has made us free. In the gospel, we understand the gospel. Taking that according to St. John chapter 6. At that time, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is that of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him. Because they saw the miracles which he had did on them that were diseased. Jesus therefore went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the past, this festival day of the Jews, was near at hand. When Jesus therefore had lifted up his eyes, and seen that a very great multitude cometh to him, he said to Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to try him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, saith to him, There was a boy here that hath five barley loaves and two fishes. What are these amongst so many? Then Jesus said, Make the men to sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. The men therefore sat down, in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to them that were at sat down, in like manner also of the fishes, as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, lest they be lost. They gathered up therefore, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above to them that had eaten. Now those men... When they had seen and what a miracle Jesus had done, said, What is that? This is of a truth, a prophet that is to come into the world. Jesus, therefore, when he knew that they would come to take him by force and make him king, fled again to the mountain, himself alone. That's part of the words of today's holy gospel. Amen. Today, this Atari Sunday, there are many mysteries in this gospel. As we read the gospel of St. John, chapter 6, we also read in the Holy Bravery about Moses. The mystery of Moses and the mystery of the Blessed Sacrament are read about in the Holy Bravery and in the Mass today. And it is interesting that, that our Lord is going to prophesy the Blessed Sacrament in John, chapter 6. It is a most beautiful chapter, a very long chapter of St. John, in which he is going to say, I shall, my flesh is meat indeed, my blood is drink indeed. And he's going to leave himself behind in such a great gift of the Blessed Sacrament. But one of the mysteries of the gifts of our Lord, when we look at the gifts of our Lord, we must notice the situation, the timing, the circumstances of these gifts. We considered one yesterday, one was when he prophesied the Blessed Sacrament. Yesterday we read about it in the Old Testament in the Mass of yesterday. We read about it, about Abraham. And in the, or in the breviary, rather, we read about Abraham. And how Abraham 
was uh, that, that uh, he had the battle with Melchizedek. And he saved the people of God. He saved the, 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 not the people of God, but he saved the people of Sodom and the people of Gomorrah. Because Lot was in the city of Sodom. And what were the circumstances by which that holy sacrifice took place, which was prophesied by Malachi, he said there will be a new sacrifice like in the sacrifice of Melchizedek. Where Melchizedek came, a king of Salem, the king of peace. When did the king of peace show up? Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, he showed up on the day that Abraham saved the king of Sodom and saved the king of Gomorrah. But in a great battle that he fought with not only his servants against five kings, he attacked them in the night and he defeated the five kings and drove them away and saved the people of Sodom and the people of Gomorrah. And amongst the people of Sodom, of course, was Lot. And in thanksgiving to God for this great victory, which was by a miraculous hand of God, the king Melchizedek, who was both king and priest, came and offered a sacrifice of bread and wine. Who was the sacrifice offered for? The people of Sodom and the people of Gomorrah. These people that lived most wicked lives were guilty of the sin that we call sodomy, the sin of that city, and the Gomorrites, the same sin. And these wicked people were saved by God, by the hand of Abraham, by his servants, and the priest offered a sacrifice for these great sinners. And what did they do? They said, thank you, Abraham, for this great miraculous victory. And they thanked God for preserving them. And they went back to the city of Sodom. And as quickly as they went back to the city, so quickly did they return to their sins. They were like what have happened to the evil thief. There were two thieves who were criminals. Two thieves that were wicked and murderers and blasphemers and enemies of God hanging on the cross next to Christ. And one of them was St. Dismas and the other one was Gesmos. And what did Gesmos say? If you are the Son of God, save yourself, save us. Prove to the Son of God, and I'll believe. Take me down from this cross, and I will believe. Now what happened, what would have happened had that wicked thief come down from the cross? And Bishop Sheen says, would he have repented? No. He would have gone on with the dirty business of murder and thievery and the like. For he wanted to be taken down from the cross. Whereas the machine says the other one wanted to be taken up. There are many crosses that come to us in life. And the Sodomites prayed to God. And the Gamorites prayed to God. And they wanted to be saved from the five kings that conquered them. And Abraham came and heard their prayer. And God heard their prayer. And Melchizedek came and he offered a sacrifice of bread and wine. And what was the good of that bread of wine? It prophesied the beauty of a sacrifice in the New Testament, but now it was still 1,900 years before Christ would be born. And Abraham was there, give, and he prayed, and he had a great victory, but the people did not repent. They were taken off their cross. They were returned back to their city. They were saved by Abraham, the man of faith, with a few servants that had fought their first battle against five kings that had just won a war. And those servants, with Abraham the shepherd, defeated the army. It was a great victory by the hand of God. And it was all known to both the wicked kings who fled before Abraham and the other wicked kings who were saved by Abraham. And Abraham and his faith himself recognized God was behind this and it was the offering of bread and wine, the power of the offering of bread and wine that brought about this great victory. Victory comes from the Mass. Who benefited from it? They were all there. And they went right back to their sin. Just like right now in the church, many people are saying there are many good signs in the Catholic Church because the Latin Mass is coming back. The people of Sodom, the people of our modern world, and the people of Gomorrah, the people of our modern world, they are going to the Latin Mass. They're coming back to the true Mass. It was taken from us at Vatican II. They're coming back to the true Mass. They're coming back to the Latin. They're coming back to the beautiful incense. They're coming back to these wonderful things all over the world. And so clearly this is a sign of a great conversion. They're all coming back. And they won't be without their Mass. The day is March 
20 seconds, they don't have their mass. By one move of the government, by one whim, by one breath of air, our Lord Jesus Christ said, when you went out in the desert to see John the Baptist, what were you out to see? A reed shaken by the wind? Who offers this mass? They are reeds shaken by the wind. They offer the true mass. They celebrate the true Holy Sacrifice of Mass. They've got beautiful incense and wonderful choirs. And the people are coming because it's allowed. They're coming because it's approved. They're coming because it's returning in popularity. Just like 1950s style restaurants that came back in popularity. You get the red vinyl seats and the, and the, and the crappy hamburgers that looked like the ones before, only before they actually were made out of meat and they were edible. And now they're garbage, but they look the same. I, it was used to be like this, I remember. Was it really like that? No, it wasn't. But the style is the same, or it seems to be. And so we have Melchizedek. He offered this sacrifice of bread and wine. The king of peace came. And who did the king of peace came to save? Ungrateful wretches. That's whom he came to save. Is it the ideal time? Why couldn't the King of Peace come to grateful souls? Why couldn't the King of Peace come to those who would really benefit from it? Who benefited from that sacrifice? Only Lot. There were thousands captured, and the whole, the whole of Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed in the hands of the enemy, but only Lot benefited. Only Lot was saved. Only Lot was grateful. Look at all those people of the Mass. Abraham, I'll never forget. I really appreciate what you did for me, Abraham. I'll never forget until until tomorrow morning when I get back to Sodom. Mm. Then the memory, what happened yesterday? I don't remember. People don't have a very long-term memory. Mm. They went back to Sodom, and they were never going to sin again. They went back to Sodom, and they were going to be good forever. They remember the power of miracles, and there was a miracle, and there was a sacrifice of the Mass, the symbol of the sacrifice of the Mass. And there was such an incredible king who was an angel that came from heaven, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. And he was a king of peace. You, you should have been there. I'm so happy I was captured by the five kings. I'm so happy I was dragged out into the wilderness. And then Abraham came, this old man with a sword, and, his, and, and all, of his far, all of his shepherds with pitchforks and sledgehammers. You should have seen what they did to those guys. <laughs> they took out those five kings. And it was a miraculous victory, and it was wonderful. We attended the sacrifice, and it was so good to be back home. I'm never going to forget it until tomorrow morning when they return back to their vomit, and they return back to their sin, and they forget completely about it, and then God sends two angels into the city of Sodom. And when he sends the two angels in, they say, these young angels who look at handsome young men, let us sin with them. That's what they said. The two angels brought out Lot, brought out his wife, brought out his family, but Lot's wife turned back and looked back, and he, she was turned to a pillar of salt. And the city of Sodom was destroyed. The city of Gomorrah was destroyed. Now they come forward 1,900 years later, and Christ again speaks about the sacrifice of the Mass. He is preparing his beautiful preparation. There are 5,000 men that followed him across the river. That's fine, don't worry. There are 5,000 that followed him across the river. 5,000 followed across the Sea of Galilee, and they followed him. Why? Because they believed in his miracles, because he saved the, the, so many of the diseased, and because he spoke the truth, and they believed, and they believed, and they believed. And they thought it was wonderful. They thought it was so wonderful. And so they came. They came. He was in the desert with them. And now Christ is speaking. Who is Christ benefiting this time? It's those apostles. Not 12 of them. Because Judas would become a traitor. But 11 of them. There are 5,000. These 5,000, they are interested in the miracles. And Christ says, Philip. All these people are going to go back home without bread. How can we feed them? Philip, what do you think? And he said this to test Philip. And Philip said, 200 penny worth, a whole boatload of money, is not enough to feed them even a little. 
But he said this to test them, for he himself knew what he would do. As we mentioned earlier, you must remember that God always knows what he's going to do. He'll ask questions. He wants answers. We may not even give the right answers. We might be fools. But he's helping us. He's teaching us. And he always knows what he's going to do. But he said to Philip, Philip, how are we going to buy the bread? Then there's Andrew. Andrew liked a good meal. And he hadn't had a good meal for a long time. And Andrew had heard so many times Christ preaches sermons that he wasn't paying attention. There were 5,000 people there, and there was a boy that had six barley loaves and three fishes. And he ate his sixth barley loaf, and he ate his third fish, and there's only five barley loaves and two fishes left. He wasn't paying attention to the sermon. Andrew was paying attention to dinner, and the boy had just eaten an extra barley, like extra, extra loaf, and he'd eaten extra fish. And our Lord said, and then and Andrew said, but there's a guy here, he, boy, he's got five barley loaves and two fishes. Before he just had six and three. Now he's only got five and two. And then, of course, he had to show that he's an apostle that really cares. But what are these among so many? He didn't really care about so many. He just wanted one of those barley loaves. He wanted one of those fishes. And the Lord said, all right, bring the five barley loaves. Bring the two fishes. And tell the people to sit down. And he blessed and he told his apostles to break and distribute to those. And there was a great miracle, taking up 12 baskets left over. And the people believe, are these the people who are going to be the followers of Christ? There were 5,000 of them. You know, on Easter Sunday, or rather Pentecost Sunday, there were also 5,000. Between Pentecost Sunday and Monday, there were 5,000. St. Peter baptized 3,000 on Sunday. He baptized 2,000 on Monday. But they became the seed of the church. Those 5,000. But these 5,000, what would happen to them? The next day, Christ would come down the mountain. But how did the day end today? Christ went up on the mountain himself alone. It say solus. He went up on the mountain by himself alone. Everybody was happy. The apostles, look at this. They followed us in the desert. They believed what Jesus Christ said. They believed in the truth. They've seen the miracle. Now we can form an army. Now we can go and defeat the bad guys. Now we can set up our little patriot army. We can go and defeat the bad guys. We can knock out the army of Hillary. We can build up, build up, build up all the bad guys and the Bilderbergers and the Whataburgers and the Hamburgers and every other kind of Jewish burger that's out there. We can go and defeat them all. And we're ready to fight. And we're ready for battle. What are the interested in? Bread. It's the economy, stupid. They're interested in bread. And was this going to make them change? Every day we get bread from Christ. And St. Augustine says, why are we so impressed that he fed 5,000 with five barley loaves? Do we not know when you look in the field? Have you ever looked in the field of St. Augustine? You see wheat. It's just grass. But that wheat is turned into bread. And that wheat is edible. And that wheat sustains us. How does it happen? It's a miracle. It's a miracle every single time a little grain of wheat grows up to become wheat. It's a miracle every time wheat is put together and becomes bread. It's a miracle every time you put butter on it. And he says, we don't worry about the miracle because it happens so often. But this miracle was rare. And so we think it's an interesting and a great miracle because it's rare. But all he did was multiply bread. Whereas every day and every year we see the bread created. We see the bread formed by Christ by a miracle every year. But we are not grateful for the miracle. We don't ask God to give us this day our daily bread. We stop to do that prayer that he taught us. Which is part of our holy rosary. Give us this day our daily bread. It comes from God. We forgot about that. But they want their bread. And they want their bread, and that's going to make them become great. And Judas firmly believes in the bread. And Judas believes in the victory. And Judas is very excited. But what happens? Christ leaves and goes to the mountain. Ipse solus. This is crazy. It is a scandal to Judas. Here is his chance. He says he wants to convert the whole world as Jesus Christ. He says he's the Messiah. And every time he gets a chance to form an army, he goes and runs away. Every time he gets to gather everyone around him, he goes and does something else. He goes to the mountain himself alone. I can't believe he did that. But the next day he comes down the mountain. 
And he speaks to the people and he tells them, eat my flesh, drink my blood. And unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you shall not have life in you. That is my real flesh you must eat. It's my real blood you must drink. You don't mean it. Oh, yes, I do. Three times he said it to make sure it was very clear. They must eat his real flesh and drink his real blood. And they all, 5,000, including women and children, about 20,000, all walked away from him in disgust. And as they were beginning to walk away, our Lord Jesus Christ said to them, later in the same chapter 6 of St. John, you were happy yesterday, not because you believe in me. You were happy, not because you believe I am the truth. You were happy because of the bread. I'm not here for bread. I'm not here for money. I am here to give you divine life. And I'm here to lead you to my Father. And I'm here to give you the Holy Ghost. And I'm here to be your example. And I'm here to shed every drop of my blood for the love of your souls. I'm not here for bread. And I want you to know, love, and serve God with all your heart and all your strength. And do everything else in order to get to God. In order to make happiness enter into your souls. You already tried bread. You already tried drug, sex, and rock and roll. It doesn't work. Do you think it'll work again? It won't. You need divine love. You need divine life. You need the divine truth. And I'm going to become your food. I'm going to live inside of you. And you are not interested in that. You just want bread. And they walked away disgusted. Judas walked away in his heart. And Judas became a traitor that day. And Judas said, I cannot bide this man anymore. And then our Lord turned to his apostles. Will you leave me also? I was so popular yesterday. They were going to make me king yesterday. They believed in everything I said yesterday. They said I was the greatest yesterday. And it's not even been 24 hours. And they have forgotten. And they have walked away. Are you going to leave me also? And here we see the beauty of one of the most wonderful souls God ever made, which is Simon Peter. And another, who was very much the heart of Peter, was Moses, and we'll read about also today. Sacred Scripture will tell us about Moses, and he's a type of St. Peter. The Holy Ghost says about Moses when he died, in the book of Deuteronomy, there was no man like unto Moses from the beginning of the world until his time. There'll be no man like him until the ending of the world. Moses is pretty special. And Simon Peter is like Moses. These two will have a most sacred bond in the kingdom of heaven. Moses gave us the instrument God used for the Old Testament and Simon Peter, the instrument of God for the New Testament and they will be so similar to each other in spirit. And Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou alone hast the words of everlasting life. He didn't understand about the eating the bread, eating the body and blood of Christ. He didn't understand that either. But he said, I can't go anywhere else. I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to follow you. And our Lord Jesus Christ has given a test in his holy church. Who wants to stay with me? Do you love me more than my mass? Do you love me more than my sacraments? Do you love me more than the approval of the, of, of the exterior church? Do you love me more than the word, things of the world? Do you love me more than other things and all things? For he that is not with me is against me. He that gathers not with me scatters. Simon, son of John, he will say there, Dost thou love me? Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love you. That's the important question. Then feed my lambs. What about the shepherds now? Do the shepherds love God? Are they ready to feed the lambs? No, they're not. There must be a conversion of the shepherds. They don't love the lambs. They don't love Christ, and therefore they can't feed the lambs. They can't feed the lambs. They can't feed the sheep. And what about Moses? Today we read about Moses. Moses, after 40 years, forgot to circumcise his children. He was a Jew. He murdered the taskmaster. He ran away because he was afraid of getting caught. He, lived, he got married and lived in the desert and did not even circumcise his own children. 
He wasn't really practicing the faith, but he was still believing in God. He was too busy taking care of his sheep. He was also a shepherd. And he was watching the shepherds in the mountains one day, and he saw a bush on fire. Unless we read about the Holy Breviary today, he was all the bush on fire. And what a wonderful thing. This bush is on fire, which happens all the time in the desert, but the bush is not being consumed by the fire. That's really neat. I'm going to go look at that. And he ran over to see the bush, and as he got to the bush, God spoke from the bush and said, Moses, this is holy land. Put off thy shoes. And it is God speaking. Moses was afraid to look at God, and he turned his face away. Just like Simon Peter, when he learned of the great miracle of the catch of fish, he said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. He had the same spirit as Moses. But our Lord said, No, I won't depart from you, Simon Peter. Follow me, and I will make you to catch fish. I'm not catch fish, but to catch men. And to Moses, he said, You are the one that I'm going to send to save the Jewish people. You can't send me. He didn't want to go. No, you are the one. And I will send your brother Aaron with you, but you are the one. I want you to be the one. So Moses went, and like Simon Peter, he would make some mistakes later on in his life. But his heart always loved God, even though he made so many mistakes. Just like David later on, the grandfather of Lord Jesus Christ, would make so many mistakes, but his heart always loved God. Therefore, Christ never abandoned Moses, though he made mistakes. And he never abandoned Simon Peter, though he made mistakes. He never abandoned David, though he made mistakes. And though his old Jewish people turned against him so many times, he never abandoned them. And even at the end of the world, after all these sins of generations, they shall be brought back to their knees and back to the love of God. The our Lord is going to have his will and going to have his way. But we are not here for bread. We are not here for the economy. We're not here for a boom. We're here to know, love, and serve God, and by this means to save our souls. That's what we're here for. Let us live that way. And our Lord Jesus Christ went to the mountain himself alone because he wanted to form his apostles. And he did form them. He did change them. He did make them reason in him. But in any case, we rejoice that Lord Jesus Christ loved us, even though we are not very lovable. And he offered a sacrifice for us, even though we don't deserve it and we are ungrateful. And out of these ungrateful people, he still brought some to repentance. He still brought some back to his love. And we ask the grace to be amongst those who have been so ungrateful in the past for all the gifts that God has given to us, to be grateful from now on, to change from now on, to go back to the knowledge and love of God, and have confidence in that knowledge and that love to be our protection. And if we have tears, let us cry to heaven. He will hear our tears. Because God said to Moses today, Moses, I have heard the cry of my people, and I will send you to be the instrument to save my people, but I have heard their cry. Their cry has gone to heaven. I have heard their cry, and now I'm going to deliver them. Well, right now, there are souls suffering throughout the world, and they are crying. Let their cries go to heaven. Let their cries go to Christ. Let their cries go to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and she shall hear, and the saints shall hear, and our Lord shall hear, and they will present their, these, these tears to the Father, and the Father shall hear, and then he shall send back the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary promised by Fatima. He shall send the victory, and the enemy shall be defeated, not by the human power, not by our human ways, but by the movement of the mysterious power of the divine love and the divine ways that can never be defeated. Let's have confidence in them, and no matter what happens, never leave the knowledge and love of God. Bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.